OK, good morning, everyone. Well, good morning, good afternoon. I guess we're right on the cusp. Um, thank you very much for joining us for uh, our Friday, January 22nd edition of the weekly COVID-19 uh, situation report. And um, hope you're all bundled up and warm for the cooler temperatures coming ahead. Uh, big thank you to um, many of our elected officials who are able to join us today. We have uh, MPP uh, Dave Smith, I see joining us, uh, County Warden J. Murray Jones, and uh, our Board of Health Chair, Mayor Andy Mitchell. Um, and I believe um, MP Mary Monsaf will hopefully join us a little later too. So um, to kick us off, I uh, just want to take a moment and acknowledge that uh, we are located on the Treaty 20 Michisaugic territory in the traditional territory of the Michisaugic and Chippewa nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaties First Nations, which include Curve Lake, Hiawatha, Alderville, Scugog Island, Rama, Beausoleil, and Georgina Island First Nations. Peterborough Public Health respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaties First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. We are all treaty people. So now I will invite our board chair to provide some opening remarks, and I understand Mayor Mitchell will have to uh, jump off the call after his remarks, but uh, please do go ahead, Andy, and, and share your opening remarks. Thank you, Brittany. This past week, we've begun to see some decrease in the number of new cases being reported in our area. Many factors are at play, including our community's willingness to abide by public health measures. To everyone doing their part, I want to extend a sincere thank you. The stay-at-home order limits activities outside of our home to only essential purposes. One of these is to attend in-person learning when it can be done safely. The benefits of in-person learning are continuously reviewed relative to the risk of transmission. During the fall, our community, teachers, parents, administrators, staff, and students, did a good job managing risks associated with in-person education. When the schools closed for the holidays, only a limited number of outbreaks had been declared, and each was contained. Because of our declining numbers and lower rates of transmissions, schools in the Peterborough Public Health area are being allowed to offer in-person learning starting Monday. Parents, however, continue to have the option of distance learning. Like all activities deemed essential, in-person learning activities must conform to public health guidelines. These include the measures introduced last fall, like cohorting, and will also include additional measures. For many parents, the opportunity to have their children attend school is welcome. To make it work and to protect staff, teachers, students, and parents, it is essential that we all work to ensure that public health guidelines are adhered to. This is essential to help ensure that the numbers do not begin to rise again and that a return to distance learning only is required. Remember, going to school is considered an essential activity. Resuming in-class instruction is not a signal that the stay-at-home order is being relaxed. So please, only leave home for things you must do not for things you may want to do. Do not socialize with people outside of your household. When you are away from home, wear a mask. When with others than those with whom you live, maintain a physical distance of two meters. Wash your hands frequently. If you are ill, stay home, even if for an essential activity like school and work, and seek medical advice and get tested. Together, we will protect each other. Stay safe, be well, and in all things, be kind. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. So glad you could join us today. Um, okay, so now uh, Dr. Salvatera can provide us with a, an update on where things stand with our local COVID-19 situation. Go ahead, Dr. Salvatera. Thank you very much, Brittany. So I will begin with a situational update. As of 4.30 p.m. yesterday, we, the, we had uh, 46, active cases uh, in Peterborough. This is three less uh, than 
uh, than this past uh, Tuesday. Uh, so far this week, we have reported an additional 22 cases, which just as comparison, last week in total, we had 43 cases. So we're trending for fewer cases this week. Uh, in total, we are at 499 cases since the pandemic began. Uh, so I do expect we'll reach 500 at some point today. Uh, my team is following 80 close contacts. That's 25 less than three days ago on Tuesday. Uh, so again, it is encouraging to see these numbers start to drop. Yesterday, our community sadly lost uh, another resident to COVID-19. As we are reporting the seventh death, uh, this was in a 90-year-old community resident uh, who was not connected to a congregate living setting or a long-term care facility. So my condolences with the family. Next slide, please. As here you can see that uh, as far as new cases reported to date, we have surpassed our December case total of 137 uh, cases. We are now sitting at 152 cases so far in January. So we do, ex we do uh, see that January uh, will be uh, potentially our peak month if we're able to uh, stop the transmission effectively. Next slide, please. This chart shows our epidemiological curve, and it clearly depicts that sharp rise in the second wave that we all experienced, especially in the month of December. I think you uh, will agree that if you look very carefully uh, at the end point there, it does look like it's starting to flatten a little. Uh, hopefully it's an early sign that we may be peaking and a good indication uh, to our local residents that uh, their work in following our public health measures may be starting to pay off. Uh, we need to keep this up if we truly want to flatten this second wave curve. Next slide, please. Our sources of exposure remain consistent as they have for the past several weeks, with 65% of our cases being the result of close contacts. So those are household contacts, but they're also socializing uh, when uh, we know that now we should not be socializing with anyone outside of our household. Uh, our community spread is at about 22% of our cases. Again, a reminder that it's out there and we need to uh, only go out for essential reasons and to use our public health measures. And you'll see that travel outside of Peterborough has, uh, is greatly reduced. It's representing only 10% of our cases. For uh, demographics, uh, this slide shows that the breakdown by sex is clearly, uh, it's evenly split between male and females. Uh, and the age breakdown of our cases uh, shows that we now have 163 of our 499 cases occurring in people between the ages of 20 and 29 years. As far as testing goes, uh, we're at about a little, almost 41,000 of our Peterborough residents to date have been tested at least once. Uh, we've had 200 more since Tuesday, uh, or just over one in four of our local residents. As far as outbreaks, I have some good news first, and that is that the Fairhaven uh, outbreak was declared over yesterday. However, uh, we are showing three active outbreaks as uh, we uh, have declared a new outbreak uh, at uh, the Peterborough Regional Health Center in uh, units A2 and B2. Uh, there are currently no staff cases related to that hospital outbreak uh, and uh, testing of all patients took place yesterday. I believe that staff testing is currently underway. The other two outbreaks at Regency of Lakefield Retirement Home and Centennial Place in Melbrook remain stable. 
So uh, this week, we've learned some good news uh, that our local schools will be allowed to reopen. I'm hoping our school students and staff will be as good at wearing their face coverings as Bernie Sanders was uh, during the U.S. presidential inauguration. Uh, before the decision to reopen schools in Peterborough was made by cabinet, our chief medical officer of health consulted with the medical officers of health uh, to uh, review our local COVID data and seek our input. Our weekly incidence rate uh, continues to decline. On January 16th, we calculated a rate of 27 per 100,000 uh, and our testing positivity rate has dropped to 1.1%. I believe the data supports a return to the classroom on Monday, January 25th for both publicly funded and private schools here in Peterborough City and County. We continue to closely follow our numbers and we are monitoring the trends. If the situation in our region changes, we will take appropriate action. But we are not going back to the way we were even in December, there will be additional public health measures to keep our students and school staff safe. They include mandatory masking now for grades one to three, so that all students from grade one to 12 are now required to wear a mask. This also applies to before and after school programs, as well as for student transportation. Masks will be highly recommended, but not mandatory for kindergarten students. Reasonable exceptions on the requirement to wear masks will apply. Mandatory masking for students from grades one to 12 will also be required outdoors where physical distancing cannot be maintained. Starting next Monday, all staff will be required to provide daily confirmation or proof of having completed their daily self-screen prior to their arrival at school. Also starting next Monday, any visitors to a school will complete and provide daily confirmation or proof that they have also self-screened. Starting February 10th, Secondary students are required to provide daily confirmation or proof of having completed the daily self-screen prior to or upon arrival at school. Parents and guardians continue to be responsible for screening their children for symptoms of illness every day using the provincial COVID-19 school and child care screening tool. Even though schools will reopen for in-person learning, staff and students must stay home if they have symptoms and while waiting for test results. I'm happy to report that our testing site at Northcrest has lots of appointments open and available for same day and next day testing and that we are seeing a rapid, return around, rapid turnaround times for test results. I would also like to remind everyone that the provincial shutdown with enhanced measures as well as the stay at home order remain in effect for all of Ontario until at least February 11. So this means no socializations or gatherings before or after school, even with cohorts. It also means that organized sports and, orga and activities remain prohibited. Just as the province is requiring schools to implement enhanced public health measures, the same goes for childcare settings, effective immediately. Current evidence suggests that young children are less likely than teenagers or adults to transmit SARS-CoV-2. And with exceptions, and with few exceptions, schools reopening with various mitigation strategies in place has been successful and not usually associated with outbreaks. It is therefore my preference 
that Peterborough's children and youth attend in-person school and that school closure only be considered when significant in-school outbreaks occur. Given the harms of prolonged school closures, I believe that daily in-person classroom learning is best as it allows for consistency, stability, and equity for all children, regardless of their home circumstances. Just a brief note also to say that our vaccine interagency team met this morning. We will be issuing weekly updates on the vaccine rollout, which is starting soon, we hope, in Peterborough. We are still awaiting final confirmation of our vaccine allotment, but it is our hope now to be able to complete immunization with first dose of all long-term care home residents by the February 15th deadline. So I just want to end by sharing that I am deeply appreciative of everyone's effort to bend the curve. And I am confident that the school community will continue their diligence in following public health safety measures to keep local transmission rates low. If we all do our part by staying home, not attending school when unwell, and following all of the public health measures that should now be second nature to all of us, we can keep our schools open. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Salvatera. Okay, so I will now um, invite our uh, elected officials to uh, join us and say a few remarks. I believe uh, MP uh, Mary Monsef uh, has been able to join us and if your camera's on, um, Miriam, I'm happy to to spotlight you. Yes, hello everybody. Brittany, a few of us were in another waiting room. Uh, we went to the wrong room, so we're with you now and I hope my colleagues who are waiting there with me have arrived too. Okay, sorry, we'll confirm that with the link. Um, go ahead. Thank you so much. Hello everybody. Bonjour, Anin, Salam Alaikum. I join you from my home in Peterborough on Michisagi territory and I'd like to begin by thanking everybody, public health, frontline workers, essential workers and particularly members of our community whose efforts to bend the curve are paying off. I want to thank everybody because I know you're making sacrifices, you're canceling vacation plans, you're staying indoors and you're missing time with loved ones but those efforts are making a world of difference. I am happy to hear, particularly for our kids, that they're able to return to school. I know it has been tough, and particularly for parents, for moms who've been doing the work they normally do, in addition to helping their little ones with online learning. My four-year-old niece is Zooming these days, and as smart as she is, she needs regular attention and oversight to make sure she's focused and that she's able to actually learn. And uh, that is the work, unpaid work, that many parents have taken on. Many thanks to teachers and those working in our schools who were exhausted before uh, schools closed and are now going to be asked to do so much to keep our kids safe and to continue to ensure their learning and growing. And even as schools are open, even as the, the curve is bending, our community is mourning the loss of an elder and I too want to echo Dr. Salvatera and share my deepest condolences to the family mourning a loss today. I know that this is a really difficult time and it is even more reason for all of us to continue to be vigilant. And this is only going to be for another few months because vaccines are coming. We will have vaccines in this country for each and every person who wishes to have one by September of this year. We know that deliveries are going to be scaled back next month, uh, scaled back up next month, and we'll continue to increase throughout March. And we are on track to receive 4 million doses of Pfizer by the end of March, 
as well as 2 million Moderna doses for a total of 6 million doses. The Prime Minister spoke with the CEO of Pfizer yesterday, and he confirmed that in his press conference earlier today. I would like to ask all our community members, our friends and neighbors, to continue to be vigilant for a little bit longer. Our efforts are making a difference. We are almost there. Thank you very much, Miriam. We really appreciate the update on the vaccines. Uh, I will uh, now invite our uh, MPP, uh, Dave Smith, uh, who is with us today to share a few comments, unless you would just like to remain on the line for questions, MPP Smith. Thanks, Brittany. I really appreciate this. We've had a very good week in the Peterborough Cortha area, and I think it's reflective of the fact that come Monday, our schools will be reopening. Uh, we're one of seven areas in the province where the infections are low enough and the protocols are being respected enough that we're able to have a little bit of that sense of normalcy return. I've had a number of people reach out to my office and question why we were doing this. Why, why are we having kids go back to school? Well, mental health is a major part of our health. And if you're five, six, seven years old, it's a lot more difficult for you to really understand and appreciate what's going on with COVID-19. The sooner that we can get those kids back to a sense of normalcy, the sooner that we can do things, that they can do things that they used to be able to do, the better it is for them. Keep in mind, you can't run before you can walk. You can't walk before you crawl. We're at the stage right now of crawling. We're showing that we can open up a little bit. It doesn't mean that we open the floodgates and everyone do everything that they want to. We still have to be diligent. We're still seeing infections in the community, but we can start to crawl again. And this is a sign of hope for us as we move forward. I'm really looking forward to having an opportunity for us to do some of the things that we as adults enjoy doing and want to go back to doing. And the sooner that we can do that, the better. The only way we'll get to that is if we keep diligent with all of the public health measures, wash your hands, sanitize, avoid getting too close to people. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. Think about others, not just yourself, as you're going through this. I'll leave with one final note, uh, and I am stealing it from my friend Ken Tremblay. Stay positive, but test negative. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much, uh, MPP Smith. OK, uh, so uh, we have uh, the county warden here with us. So Warden Jones, if you would like to uh, share some comments, please go right ahead and I will put you up on the screen. Okay, thank you very much. I hope everyone can hear me. I certainly won't go on as long as uh, Mr. Smith did, but I'll try to capsulize things. Things uh, are good at the county. We're holding them there. We're doing what we are supposed to do. Uh, one new thing um, that I've initiated is is trying to get the the word out in a positive way, and not just from certain individual people. Uh, so I'm going around to all members of county council, to all our staff at the county, and we're all going to do very short little video clips uh, with reminders for people to, to stay home and stay safe and all those things. So that's a little something maybe we can do to, to, to spread the message out a little bit more. But, you know, um, we've just got to bite the bullet here and do this. And I'm still seeing people looking at every opportunity they can to justify breaking the rules. And if we could just get this through our heads, let's buckle down and do what we're supposed to do. Let's stop pointing the fingers at somebody and anybody, trying to blame them for all this because it's it's nobody's fault. Let's, let's stick together and get over this. I'd like to see Mr. Smith do things that adult, adults like to do as well. And I'm sure we'll, uh, We'll get to that. He is a little car, I understand. He likes to go to car shows, so we'll let him do that when the time is right. Uh, 
Anyway, thanks, everybody. Peterborough County gets it. We're doing everything we can, and we want everyone to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And thanks to everybody here who is uh, doing their, their part. And our motto is, of course, stay home, stay safe, and save lives. Thanks, everybody. We're all in this together. Thank you, Warden Jones. Um, always great to have you part of this and give us a few chuckles along the way. Uh, we've got uh, Mayor Diane Terrian with us today. So if you've got your camera on, Mayor Terrian, I'm happy to spotlight you. Um, otherwise, if you'd just like to be available for questions, that's fine too. Yeah, thanks, Brittany. And I've had to call in from my um, personal computer and I don't know that the camera is working, which is too bad because I actually did my hair and put on lipstick today. Um, <laughs> but if you can hear me, I don't have too much to add um, based on what we heard from the, the previous um, elected officials and, and Dr. Salvatera and thanks everybody for being on this call. Um, just want to say, you know, we know that it's been a long haul. There is light at the end of the tunnel with in-person learning um, resuming. That's very exciting. We also have seen some snowfall today, so we know that people are going to want to get outside and enjoy that. As MPP Smith said, keep abiding by those guidelines. The other potential public health thing that we need to pay attention to here is that there's extreme cold weather alerts that are forthcoming, um, so people just need to be mindful of that as well. Um, the One Roof Community Centre is open for extended hours, um, but for folks that are seeking to get out and enjoy the snowfall and get that fresh air, just again, to be careful um, about the about the frostbite and the extreme cold weather that's going to be coming our way, I believe, starting tomorrow and then potentially for the next couple of days. Um, so with that, I'll just leave it there. There'll be some more updates from the city next week. We've been working, as, as Brittany and Dr. Salvatera would know, with public health on guidelines for um, opening of the canal. So stay tuned for that. Um, because again, we want to get out there, uh, but we want to do it in a safe and mindful way. Um, so, you know, it's been a long haul for everybody, but as we've heard um, from Miriam, uh, you know, the vaccines are rolling out, we're getting there. So we just need to hang on a little bit longer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Tarian, and thank you to all our elected officials for, for standing side by side and giving these important messages to, to our community. Um, Okay, I'll now invite uh, questions from our media partners and let's start with uh, Joelle Kovac from The Examiner. Uh, if you've got some questions and I'll put uh, Dr. Salvatera up um, in, in the spotlight. Go ahead, Joelle. Okay, so there was mention about uh, how uh, the stay home order remains in place until at least February 11th. Uh, and Dr. Salvatera, you also mentioned that uh, the province-wide that does that effectively extend the province-wide lockdown or does it matter does one supersede the other or shall we keep it simple and just say the stay home order remains in place because i don't think that's entirely clear right yeah uh, well maybe perhaps that's a question best directed at mpp smith for clarification um dave would you like to take that one Thanks, Dr. Salvatera. Uh, to answer your, your, your question quite simply, uh, Joelle, it does supersede it. So the stay at home order takes effect until February the 11th and it overrides any other legislation that um, may have been put in place prior to that. We are effectively still in the lockdown until uh, February 11th. OK, that helps tremendously. Thank you very, very much for that. Um, for Dr. Salvatera, um, I was wondering if you could uh, talk a bit about, uh, you've mentioned before that testing is occurring for uh, the UK variant. Has any of, mm -hmm. would would that be part of uh, public releases on a daily basis if, if that were found in Peterborough? Uh, I would believe, I believe so, Joelle, that if we find it in Peterborough, we will, that would be a reason to issue a public statement. Uh, just for, uh, so people are aware, there is uh, surveillance occurring right now uh, throughout the province for any of, any of the variants. Uh, so we can indicate by using a special template for Public Health Ontario Lab, we can indicate what the risk factors are. Uh, uh, are that put someone at greater risk of having a variant and then they will 
do the genetic testing to look for it. But in addition, Public Health Ontario um, is doing what's called a point prevalence study. And this, is, this has been done for all of the specimens for COVID testing that were submitted on January the 20th. They are going to actually look at every single specimen and test it to determine if, if it's a variant or not. It's gonna take them about three weeks to finalize that data and they will be reporting on their findings. But that's one way just to do a, a sweep across the whole province to look for it because we do suspect that there is a variant out in the community uh, and we just need to get a sense of where it is and how bad it is. Okay, I'm going to pass it on to others. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you, Joelle. Um, okay, so I see Matt Latour is with us today. So Matt, if you've got some questions, go right ahead. Yeah, this one would be uh, for Dr. Salvatera or maybe somebody else from public health, uh, just whoever can speak to it best. Uh, I know when Police Chief Scott Gilbert was on the call on Tuesday, he had mentioned a few charges had been laid in response to the stay home orders. Uh, and the shutdown. Have you heard any more complaints since then, or is this something you're hearing a lot about? Yeah, those complaints wouldn't make make it to my ear, Matt. But the person you really need to hear from is Julie Ingram. So we can uh, pass that question along. Uh, Brittany can do that, and we'll get back to you on it. I'll, I'll gladly do that. I do see Scott Gilbert has joined us uh, today, uh, the police chief. So I'm wondering if um, if the chief has anything to add. My camera, like the uh, mayor's, is not working, and I haven't had a chance to do hair and makeup as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have not laid any additional charges uh, since the um, events of the w this past weekend. However, we're still vigilant, and we are still getting a number of complaints directed towards us. Uh, people either not understanding what um, what it means, um, what the provincial uh, lockdown means. So we're doing a lot of education over the phone with that, and we do still have officers going out and uh, investigating the complaints that have been coming in to us. But again, no charges uh, since the weekend. Perfect, that's it for me, thank you. Great, um, and thank you very much, uh, Chief Gilbert. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. Um, okay, so let's hear from uh, Paul Rellinger from Kawartha now. If you've got some questions for Dr. Salvatera or any of the elected officials, just go ahead. Uh, thanks so much, Brittany. A uh, couple questions for Dr. Salvatera, if I may. Um, mm -hmm. you, you alluded to the outbreak at PRHC. Um, can, uh, how many people are affected by that? Do you know, or uh, mm -hmm. are they? Uh, I think you said it doesn't involve staff, so I'm assuming it's patients at the hospital? Correct. And as of, uh, I'm just trying to look, Paul, for my, uh, I had that information out as far as yesterday night. It, it's it's not, it's a few cases. And uh, I believe, um, and the affected unit, which is A2B2, is the one that provides stroke rehabilitation for inpatients. Um, they've got a number of measures in place uh, including the patient isolation, the uh, testing of all their patients, uh, their staff, their physicians, and currently no visitors are being allowed to that unit at this time. Uh, so um, if you've got additional questions, I'm going to direct you to PRHC and they can, uh, they can take it from there. Uh, no, that covers it off. Great. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, although I did have one thing that I I wanted to ask you again in regards to PRHC, um, because it is a hospital setting. Um, I mean, you're obviously, with any case, you're looking at contact tracing. Um, but is that particularly alarming that it's it's been able to come into a hospital setting and and sets off some alarm bells? Well, it's not the first time that we've had an outbreak at PRHC, uh, so uh, it's not unexpected. 
we um, and we will uh, support the hospital in uh, their containment and investigations. We they were very quick last time to be able to br um, bring the outbreak under control, uh, and so I anticipate that they're working very hard on it and expect that they will be able to do that uh, this time as well. Uh, great, thank you. Um, regarding the um, I, I think it was alluded to on you know, during Tuesday's briefing um, that there there's a, a pending enforcement blitz of grocery stores and big box stores. I'm just mm -hmm. checking to see if that's still on track. And do you know when that will happen specifically or is it supposed to be a surprise? No, it, it's actually not a surprise. I asked that question to the Ministry of Labor myself because they are uh, organizing and, and uh, these blitzes, uh, compliance blitzes across the province. Uh, and um, they are scheduled to come to Peterborough in February. It'll be uh, uh, the first, the mid-February. Uh, and we will be providing details ahead of time. And the reason for that is that the ministry finds that the, just even the announcement of the of the blitz is very helpful in changing behaviors and in getting better compliance across those sectors. So uh, you will be hearing lots more about it before we are, are out and into those settings for our inspections. Great. Well, the best surprise is no surprise, right? So <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, one more thing, Dr. Salvatore, if I may. Um, I guess it was last May heading into June that we saw a similar trend as we're seeing right now in terms of numbers starting to go down. And then we went into May, June, July, even August, numbers stayed relatively low. My, my question is, with, with the good news today, and it is good news, that numbers seem to be plateauing or perhaps even going down a little, um, is it a bit of a double-edged sword for you in terms of you want to put that message out there to encourage people, but in the back of your mind, you want people to keep doing what they're doing? I mean, I mean that's you, you know what I mean? There's a danger that people might just say, hey, you know, we're, we're looking good. Well, I would hope that this will work actually as positive reinforcement, Paul, to show our community members that here is the proof that it's worth it that their sacrifice and their, uh, and their, you know, staying at home is paying off. It's going to be even more important now at this time in the second wave because of the presence of these variants uh, and the fact that they are about over 50% more transmissible than the uh, regular strain of the COVID uh, virus that's been circulating. So if they take off in our population, even though they're not more virulent, but the, the, the sheer fact that we are going to have so many more infected and so many more outbreaks will mean that we will have more deaths. I think we are racing against the clock in trying to get our most vulnerable people immunized. But even so, uh, the vaccine doesn't come into full effect until two weeks after the second dose. Keep in mind that our long-term care residents here in Peterborough haven't even had their first dose. So we have to do everything we can to stop the spread, especially of the variant strain, in order to keep our uh, long-term care residents, all of our vulnerable seniors safe in our community long enough that we can have vaccine available for them and that they have time to get a second dose. Uh, terrific, Dr. Salvatera. Thanks so much as always. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, okay, uh, Taylor Clydesdale from Peterborough this week and, and my Kawartha, please go ahead and ask your questions. Thanks, Brittany. I think all the questions I have today are uh, oriented to Dr. Salvatera. Um, just in terms of uh, COVID vaccination data, uh, when do we start to see uh, numbers come in on uh, how many people have been vaccinated and uh, how will we be able to access this uh, information? So we will be, it'll be as much as we can, Taylor, it'll be uh, 
uh, either real time or potentially weekly updates. Uh, and we are creating, we will have a page on our website where we will track, like we do now, cases and outbreaks. We will be tracking the, uh, the progress of our vaccine rollout. So stay tuned for that. Um, and uh, we should, if we get vaccine the week of February 1st, that will be a great uh, uh, incentive for us to get that information up on our website where you can see it. All right, perfect. Yeah, just from a news perspective, where we're, I'm sure everyone on the call is looking forward to uh, being able to uh, see those numbers. Um, also, just looking towards uh, looking at the uh, the seventh death in the region that uh, occurred. Um, can you share with us uh, how that person was infected? Because you'd said they're not connected to any long-term care and they're not connected to congregate care settings. So just wondering if, if you know. I, uh, and unfortunately, I can't because we don't have certainty of where this person acquired their infection. Um, we're, we're not sure. And uh, and so uh, it's really a bit of an unknown for us right now. Uh, and um, uh, we continue to uh, to look at this quite closely and we continue to uh, pursue any additional information to see if we can uh, make a link. But right now we haven't been able to make a, a link with any certainty. Um, so would that mean then that, you know, of the uh, of the sources of infection that we know, uh, contact with a, a, a known case and travel, that mm -hmm. at this time this is being considered a case of community spread? Uh, I can't even say that, I'm afraid. I'm not certain that it's community spread. So um, I, I would just, um, so our, our investigation is ongoing uh, with this uh, unfortunate uh, death uh, of a community member. We continue to investigate and um, we still, uh, we just still aren't certain. Okay, um, just with uh, hopefully, hopefully January is our peak and things start to calm down a bit in February. Um, kind of what are you happen hoping is the uh, kind of uh, the decline in cases look like and do you foresee um, between uh, uh, kind of our, our vaccination period, do you think there could be a third wave? <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> I, I mean, I would love to see uh, Peterborough uh, progress to the point where we can go back to a green uh, zone once the uh, stay-at-home order is lifted. That's where I hope we can uh, progress to is green. We're now pretty strongly trending towards yellow. And, uh, but I, I, I would love to see us get to green. That's good for everyone. It's good for our long-term care residents because we know one of the greatest predictors of outbreaks in long-term care homes is your community baseline transmission. It's good for our children and students in schools as well because it reduces their risk of outbreaks. It also frees up my staff so that we have more capacity to put towards vaccinating rather than just case and contact management. So green would be great. Okay, perfect. I think that's all for me, thank you. Great, thank you, Taylor. Okay, uh, I think I see two media left and we'll go with Jessica Nisnik from Global TV. So go ahead, Jessica. Good afternoon. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm actually good. I think I, I was just going to ask what units at the hospital, um, but you've mentioned that it's the stroke unit. And um, I just wanted to make a suggestion if I may be so bold, which I think everyone knows I am. Um, it's often hard to get a comment from the hospital. So maybe going forward, if we're able to include them in the meetings, I'm sure they're very busy and I get that. And I think you do. Uh, you guys do a great job, but I just find I I have a hard time often getting, and I know you can only comment so much, Dr. Salvatera. Mm -hmm. So just to th just food for thought. Thank okay, you. Okay, I'll, I'll leave that with Brittany then. Thanks, Brittany. No problem, Jessica, thanks. Okay, so um, Jessica, if, you're, uh, if you've got what you need, then let's hear from uh, Trent Radio. Is that you, Rob? Do you have any questions for our speakers today? 
Um, yeah, it's Rob. I don't. There's a privilege in going last, which is that everybody already got the good questions before I had to think of any. OK, great. Well, then um, I think we uh, we've we've made the rounds. So uh, thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. We will uh, see you back here on Tuesday and uh, very much appreciate uh, all of our elected officials who are making time in their schedule to to help us with these uh, these biweekly updates. Have a great weekend, everyone. Stay safe out there and uh, we will connect with you next week. Bye bye. Thanks, Brittany. Thank you, Brittany.